from the Alex Trebek stage at Sony Picture Studios, this is Inside Jeopardy. Ah, oh, there he is, as producer Alexa knows. Probably <laughs> one of the largest contributing reasons to me enjoying this podcast is getting to hear Johnny on the axe at the start of every episode. Hello, welcome back to Inside Jeopardy, your exclusive and official podcast destination for all things happening in the world of Jeopardy. I'm Michael Davies, and here across the table from me is the major contributing reason for the oh. fact that I enjoy doing this podcast, producer Sarah Foss. Well, thank you, Michael. I will never mind being second to Johnny Gilbert. So. You're not second. Oh. You're not second. Oh, okay. You're all part of the same thing mm, for me. How could the you Pangea. The Pangea us? of everything that I enjoy <laughs> about Jeopardy. Uh, Do you say that to all your children? Yes. uh, Happy belated Father's Day to uh, all the dads out there. Uh, We are taping this before Father's Day. I'm about to get on a plane and fly back and be with my children (laughs) for Father's Day. I'm seeing one in Los Angeles tonight, and I'm going to see the other three in New York when I get back over the weekend. I'm going to remember myself to my children. Um, And you have to say this every Father's Day. uh, Thank you to... (laughs) To, to the women that birthed these children <laughs> and took on the vast burden of responsibility oh. and allowing me to have this career and and host Inside Jeopardy. But yes, uh, it's a great joy of my life being a father. Well, you do it well. Happy Father's Day to you. Thank you so much. My daughter does listen to this pod. My older daughter, Taylor Foss, she also turned 11 over the weekend. Wow, so. big birthday. Yeah. Big birthday. That's exciting. It's big. It's double digits. It's got two ones. She's very tween right now. I'm sure you remember the tween years with your girls. Yeah, I do. Uh, it's you know I was very fortunate that that my girls like were adorable as tweens, adorable as teens. They they never really presented any issues. But I spent their entire tween years terrified of what was about to happen, and it never did happen. It yes. just continued to be glorious. Well, we're about to head off, as you mentioned. We're taping this before the weekend. I am bringing my daughter and her two best friends, and my husband and my mom and our other to Vegas. We're doing Whoa. Las Vegas. Well, for Father's Day, Vegas. I love this. Well, it's really for Taylor's birthday, but yes, Chris is going to enjoy some. Uh, <laughs> we're so going to see a show we're going to go to an indoor amusement park Vegas it's a big family location family friendly okay very good there you go hopefully we'll we'll win big in the uh, birthday celebrating apparently I read here that we have an update on the scary ham which is really this is this is essentially just a scary ham podcast it's masquerading as a Jeopardy Mm -hmm. podcast well none other than Smithfield brand I mean famous for hams yeah they have now joined the conversation (laughs) they did comment on our scary ham post gone but never forgotten ellen we are so very sorry for your loss please let us know if there is anything we can do yeah jeopardy responded we appreciate your condolences i think oh sorry we appreciate your (laughs) ham dolences which is even better um uh, jeopardy is so clever and uh uh, well maybe there's smithfield ham in our future i love this i don't know i could see it i at least think Ellen's going to be receiving one. I have a feeling. Yeah. Uh, And we've got a new Jeopardy super champion. That's right. Super champion status. Adriana reached it last week. The first super champion we have come across since Ray Lalonde back in December of 2022. Adriana now at 13 wins. So she's inching closer and closer to the LOL, Michael. Yeah, the leaderboard of legends. Yeah. Um, This is a name I struggle with. I know how to pronounce it, but there are certain names that in an English (laughs) accent, it's just impossible to do. And of course, I go immediately to Adriana uh, Mm -hmm. and Adriana makes me put on a fake American accent. So which I, as you know, I can only do when I hold my nose. So it's Adriana Harmeyer. um, And she is from West Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, Indiana even itself is a a very (laughs) tough state for me. Yeah, I'm not trying to... uh, poke fun at anybody it's only at myself that i can't say these names yes and we laugh at you not with you okay good her name <laughs> is coming up a lot you're yep. having to say it a lot Adrian, because adriana everyone is talking about her the fans are loving her yes, and we're absolutely. just enjoying you know it's fun to have a, a streaker as we sometimes call them it's fun to have one of those again we're of course going to be discussing adriana's game shortly but first let's take a look back at this week in jeopardy history <laughs> John Beck, our champion, played brilliantly all week. 20,000, came up with a correct response, risked 10,000, wins 30,000, has a five day total of $117,099. Five time champion. Come on over here, John. And you were just great. Congratulations Thank you. Thank to you. you. Take a look. 
Here's the beautiful automobile you're going to be driving soon. Well, congratulations, John. As a five-time undefeated Jeopardy! champion, you've won the new Jaguar X Type, a sleek, compact, and nimble automobile for the next generation. Experience classic Jaguar styling with the adrenaline rush of a V6 from Rusnak Jaguar Pasadena. Congratulations. And, of course, the uh, big money tournament of champions will await you next time out. And on our next show, to wrap up the week tomorrow, three new players starting from scratch here on Jeopardy. Hope to see you all then. It was on June 19, 2003, when John Beck won his fifth game in a runaway he left that day undefeated with $117,099, and as you just heard, a brand new Jaguar and an invitation <laughs> to the Tournament of Champions. On that day, John became the last retired five-day champion in Jeopardy! history, as of course, right after that, we eliminated the five-day limit the very following season. See, in England, we pronounce uh, that car brand as Jaguar, not oh. as Jaguar. But oh. it's something I I also enjoy. Oh, well, we say Adriana. So. Yeah, I got it. Speaking of her, she returned on Monday to go for a ninth win. Adriana getting out to an early lead and maintaining it throughout the game. But Josh Fry slowly closed the gap to stay in contention entering final. Adriana was the only player correct, and she secured that ninth win. Yeah, what a player. Uh, Tony Hale, great guy I've enjoyed interviewing on Men in Blazers, a guy I've enjoyed <laughs> on, on a number of Embassy Row shows, uh, did the emotions category for us. We have new emotions in Inside Out, we too. We do, but um, he's, he's an OG emotion. Yeah, plays he's, fear. He's fear. I did have to show him a photo of my family from a few Halloweens ago when we did dress up as the Inside Out characters. Yeah. It was our dog who played his character, but he was really impressed. He's like, wow, your family really, you go all out. Even the dog had all the accessories that Tony Hale wears as Sphere. Uh, regular viewers will will realize that we've had a lot of movie stars and, and actors promoting TV shows, promoting movies. We've had Chris Pratt, we've had Emily Blunt and Matt Damon. We've had like, you know, and it's partly because movie studios and TV networks are realizing that Jeopardy is reaches so many people that it's a very good environment in which to publicize their movies or publicize their TV shows. We don't always say yes. We say yes when editorially it fits within our show. Or we think it's going to be something that's going to advance the game board. No money changes hands. We have to um, emphasize that. We never take money in return for putting things on the game board. But we just think that, you know, movies, big TV shows represent overall the culture that happens in, uh, even if it's popular culture, that's the culture that happens uh, within the world that we ask about. And it gives us the ability to sort of switch things up on the game board. We thought Tony did a magnificent job. Yeah, and this is a great example where it's not that we're presenting a category on Inside Out 2. Yeah. We're presenting a category on emotions. The clues feel very Jeopardy, yeah. but we pick someone who fits to present that category, none other than Tony Hale, the emotion of fear in Inside Out 2. Can't wait to see that one, actually. I'm very, very excited. Now, Josh Fry, we have to bring him up because he made a particular wager for the final daily double of the game. Eight clues left on the board. Had a chance to take a lead from Adriana, but wagered only 1500 He was correct, but then he was still about $2,000 off the lead. You know, maybe he wasn't comfortable with the category, but despite all of that, you got to say he's in the running for second chance. 20 correct responses, 39 buzzer attempts, and actually a higher Coriat than Adriana in that game of 13600 Wow, interesting. Yeah. Well, it was a close game. Let's hear how Adriana was feeling after it came to an end. Adriana, congratulations. Thank you. How did that feel? That was stressful. <laughs> that was a close one. Very close. Good game. What's the stressful moment? Wagering or? Doing math, hoping that whatever book came up with something I knew. Um, wasn't completely sure if I was right with my answer either. So all of it. Yeah, as Final Jeopardy clues go, you know, that one's... Maybe a little bit of guesswork. Yeah. Because you probably don't know the review word for word. And all, all three of you mentioned controversial novels of the 50s, so well done. But uh, Lolita came to you first, is yeah. that right? Yeah, first thought, so I stuck with it. Stuck with it? Yeah. Do you know the book, seen the movie either? No, I'm familiar with it, never actually read it. You seem like kind of a movie buff. You go to movie categories soon rather than late? Yeah, I like all the pop culture categories. Is that right? Yeah. Do you feel like you keep up, like pop music or? We could stick to the like 60s through the 80s. Um, that's my wheelhouse, I think. But 
I try. Because as we know, it has to be in the 90s CD-ROM mm -hmm. version of Jeopardy. Yeah, So exactly. Green Acres, perfect. Lolita's perfect. Yep. Well, another great game for you. We tend to say on Jeopardy, 10 wins makes you a super champ. So you're not yet a superhero, but you're only one game away. Yeah, no pressure there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you already have over $200,000. Yeah, it's, I can't complain. It's not a ton of pressure, but Super Champ would be nice, right? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Well, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It was a great game from all three of you, and uh, congrats, Adriana. Thank you. Okay, on Tuesday, Adriana officially secured Super Champion status after status after a tight battle against <laughs> challenger Scott McCann. After dropping $3,000 on the last daily double of the game, Adriana closed out the round strong and took the lead into final. All three players were correct, and Adriana notched her 10th win. And we also had two archivists in this game, Michael. Yeah, and in the, you know, considering that Jeopardy is 60 years old, that's pretty uh, outstanding. Of course, we didn't change the rules so you could win um, that many games in a row until 2005, but still a pretty remarkable achievement. Yeah, it's cool. And also, you know, Scott McCann, once again, these second chance players are really, when you go up against such a solid champion, a lot of people do discuss who could have almost defeated them. Scott had 15 correct responses. Ended double Jeopardy in second place with 10,200, despite not finding any daily doubles. In the post game, Scott even mentioned he was he was playing sick. And Ken joked this was like his his Michael Jordan flu game. So huh. who knows what Scott could have done at his full his full potential? Well, I did catch up with Adriana after her win to find out how she was feeling about becoming a Jeopardy super champion. Adriana Harmeyer, 10 game Jeopardy champion. How does that sound? It's amazing. Unbelievable. I know we've talked about it. One game was the goal. Then you make the TOC. Now you're a double digit winner. I mean, did you have these kind of aspirations in your wildest Jeopardy dreams? I always hoped that I could, but I didn't expect it to happen. And now, you know, nearly a quarter of a million dollars that you've earned. <laughs> That's big money, especially for things like European trips. Yes, that is unexpected. I we'll have to do a lot of thinking about what to do with that money. I don't know if you heard Ken say it or if it sunk in, but only 16 people other than you have won double digit games in Jeopardy. Yeah, that's gonna take some time to sink in. It's probably good I didn't know that going into the game or it might've been on my mind. Have you heard us say over the years the term super champion? Yes. Did you know what that meant? I knew it meant very good at Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> I even had to remind Ken that it's someone who's won at least 10 games, which is now you. You are a super champion, Adriana. I'm a super champion. That's going to take some getting used to. I have to know, when you've watched the show through the years, who are some of the champions that you've looked up to or admired or you know, thought, wow, how do they know all of that? Oh, everyone who can win multiple episodes is so impressive, but I very much remember watching Ken in his original run and just being amazed every day that he just kept going on. Yeah, and to think you only need to do another 64 to match him. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, and one thing you've probably realized now is just how much stamina this takes. You know, obviously we shoot five shows in a day. Mm -hmm. For those that don't really know where we are in Jeopardy production time versus air time, You've now played 10 straight games. Yes, it is exhausting, more than I ever would have imagined coming in. How do you muster up the strength to just do it game in and game out? I, I just remember when I come out that this is fun. This is what I want to do, and whatever happens, I'm going to try to enjoy it while it lasts. What has surprised you most about this experience? I've just been so amazed by all my competitors and just the positivity and camaraderie that we're all just so happy to be here and to be part of this show that we've all enjoyed for so long. Well, you're part of the Jeopardy family forever now, a 10 game champion, looking at the leaderboard of legends in your sights. I think it could happen. Keep it going, enjoy it. And we're uh, so happy to watch this run. Thank you. Michael, one thing people are talking about mm -hmm. is that people don't lose as a 10-game champion. No 10-game champion in Jeopardy history has ever lost on their 11th game. Wow, now you've cursed it the next time we get there. Well, thankfully, in this game on Wednesday, Adriana continued her strong gameplay, ending the Jeopardy round with 7,600, but Enzo Cunanan gave her a run for her money, fighting hard through double Jeopardy, managing to go into final only $4,200 behind Adriana. They were both correct, 
but Adriana takes the win. Adriana now tied with Arthur Chu and Jonathan Fisher with 11 wins. Yeah, we talk about, obviously, Ellen and her Scary Ham interview being a contender for, you know, best interview at Mm -hmm. honors, but... This was a good one, too, that we had from Connor. He had a celebrity sighting in eighth grade at a field trip to a museum outside of Detroit. Eminem was there with his daughter, you know, just trying to have a nice, good time. Connor and his classmates told everybody at school about it, of course, as you do in eighth grade. And they all ran up and were probably ruining Eminem's day. So Connor took the moment on Jeopardy to apologize to Eminem. I like to think that the Scary Ham story um, transcended the idea of just being a Jeopardy contestant interview. And it's almost like the Jeopardy B. You know, mm. the B, that thing where people go and mm-hmm. they t- tell true stories of things that happen in their life. We could do a Jeopardy B and we could lead with the Scary Ham story. Potentially, we get in here with Connor's story as well. We could do a whole night of great stories that are that are bigger, that, that, that are too big to be contained within our contestant interview at the top of Act 2. I like it. I like where you're going with this. Okay, good. Enzo, Michael, have to consider him in the second chance running as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Just currently, I think he's at Oxford going to Cambridge or at Cambridge going to Oxford. He seems to be like a a remarkably intelligent young man, a great Jeopardy player. Some of the online comments, uh, someone said, I was in Quiz Bowl with Enzo way back in high school. He was a powerhouse then, Mm -hmm. and he's a powerhouse now, really hoping he makes it back for second chance. Enzo would seem like a lock for second chance. Adriana is definitely filling up the second chance field. 17 correct responses for Enzo, 38 attempts, ends DJ with 16,400. Correct and final. Got to be part of the discussion. Ken caught up with all three of our contestants to discuss Adriana's low wager and, of course, Enzo's second chance possibilities. Enzo, that was a fantastic game. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. You know, that was quite stressful. You were very strong on the Shakespeare quotes. I've read half of his plays, so but I can't get into the comedies for some reason. But I did participate in a ninth grade production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. They cast me as the cranky old father of Hermia for some reason. Uh. I can't imagine why. (laughs) Well, I mean, as an audition for a second chance tournament spa, that was a pretty great game. Mm. Connor, I have to say I was impressed with Three Dog Night. How do you know you're Boomer Rock? Uh, an Eminem and two chains lot of fan car like you. Trips with uh, my dad. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Your dad uh, made sure you knew Three Dog Night. Yeah. That's... Well, these two are just lucky. A James Taylor category wasn't up there. <laughs> oh, that would have been your jam. <laughs> would have been curtains. And let's see. You knew the Dnieper River. You were very good on the rivers, in fact. Yeah, I didn't expect to be, but it worked in my favor. If how do you it... how do you know that stuff? You're studying the map. I guess so. Yeah, it stuck. Maybe it was in the world book. Because famously, you have not been to Europe yet, right? You're planning that trip. Right. This is going to pay for that. (laughs) Are you going to go see all those rivers in order? The Loire, then the Mine, then the Dnieper. I'm going to have to get that list, yeah. Tell me about the small wager on Mine. I wasn't feeling confident in that category, and of course, I regret that wager now, but... It somehow all worked out for me. I mean, after 11 wins, do you feel like you might be a little bit temperamentally, like, underconfident? Like, are you selling yourself short as a Jeopardy champ? I think I just want to keep going, so I'm trying not to... Big swings? Yeah, I don't want to miss, so I'd rather just be a little careful. That's exactly how I played, but, uh, you know, today you got the you got the new generation of money ball players. Yeah. Well, it was a great game from all three of you. Thank you yep. so much for being here, and... Uh, We'll see you back for game number 12, Adriana. Mm-hmm. Let's see how long this goes. Okay, moving on to Thursday, where Adriana, after a slow start, turned it on in double jeopardy. And thanks to a late $3,000 daily double, took the lead into final. Once again, she was correct in final. She's now 10 for 12, by the way, Sarah. Mm. And she secured win number 12. And now she's tied with Seth Wilson and Austin Rogers. So just those names you remember, yeah, you think of. Names. She's joining the ranks. Yeah. This is an interview I didn't think I would necessarily hear on Jeopardy. Mm-hmm. Hung me talking about her irritable bowel syndrome. There we go. Would that make the Jeopardy be? We're it, unsure. It might. Yeah. And, you know, she talked about it in relationship to her husband in the third date and knowing that he was the guy. And then in the Post-game chat, Ken asked if she found Jeopardy to be more stressful than a third date. And she said, if you find the right game, like finding the right person, it feels very comfortable in Mm. your tummy. And Ken joked, well, we want to be a safe place for people of all different tummies. (laughs) That's who we are. Very much so. (laughs) Well, we closed out the week with a great game between Adriana and challengers Susan Ayub and Caitlin Tarr. All three players battled throughout, but Caitlin, after dropping $3,000 on a daily double, took the lead over Adriana, heading into final. And for the first time in her run, Adriana did not have the lead. 
All three players with five-digit scores over 10,000, but Adriana, the only one to come up with the correct response, closes out the week as a 13-game Jeopardy champion. Yeah, unbelievable. Now tied with Jeopardy greats Matt Jackson and Ray the Sway Lalonde with 13 wins. This was a great game. Again, I know we're saying it every day, but Caitlin Tarr, you have to think she's in there for second chance. You're putting friends. everybody in second chance. Well, How many not, weeks are no, you going to run not. that tournament this Actually, year? Actually, much less, Michael. Okay, much good. less. I'm not going to divulge that, but it's not It's not like last season. Okay, got it. Less tournaments, less competitions. You seem to have a lot of contenders. I know. We have so many contenders because Caitlin, 21 correct responses, ended double jeopardy with 12,800, gets the lead over Adriana. I mean, no one's done that yet in the run. Hmm. Miss final, but still a $15,000 choreat. Okay. Perfect. Well, Ken congratulated all three of the players on a fantastic game. Let's take a listen. I just want to congratulate all of you on that game. Like, I know uh, it didn't go the way all of you wanted it to, but fantastic. You all had $10,000 at least heading into final, which makes for a tricky wagering scenario, right? What were you all thinking during the break? Literally nothing. (laughs) Fugue state? Yeah. Why did I wager $410? I will never be able to know the answer to that. (laughs) Well, I mean, in hindsight, maybe you like that the correct responses made it moot. Yeah. I thought that was a tough clue. I actually did not get that clue right when I looked at it uh, in the room. Uh, And I was pretty impressed that Adriana just zeroed right in on it. Yeah, it just came right to me. I don't know why. Do you think in hindsight, was it positive in the clue or? I think think positive helped and then the alliterative, I think, got me there. Like I knew from the setup, I was like, a 61 executive order, it's got to be civil rights, and it just did not come to... I guess positive can mean a lot of different things, right? Mm -hmm. What a fantastic game. Caitlin, you actually had, I believe, two more correct responses than Adriana, one of one or two times that anybody has has stayed ahead of her on the buzzer. What do you credit your your amazing Jeopardy talent to? Well, the buzzer speed is video games. (laughs) Is that right? (laughs) I would assume so. Uh, And then, yeah, stenography Jeopardy, lots of pub quizzes. (laughs) There was, no, there was no button in Stenography Jeopardy? You didn't know No, have your but there fork? probably should have been. <laughs> <laughs> what video games like would you recommend to the aspiring Jeopardy contestants? Oh, I'm not learning anything from them. <laughs> <laughs> right, but like, what, what do you think oh, helped you get the button down? Um, I play a lot of Hades. Oh, I guess you can pick up some Greek, Greek mythology from that. There you if go. you're so inclined. You get timing and Greek mythology. Yeah. I've said this before this week, but uh, a very convincing audition for our second chance tournament right there, Caitlin. That was, Thank you. That was a great game. How, did you expect that your streak was over coming into final? Oh, absolutely. I was ready to... Well, which stage of grief? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I lost count. <laughs> <laughs> How did it feel thinking that maybe it was over? Were you philosophical? A little sad. I, I've done well, so I can't complain about my time here whenever it ends. Well, congratulations on win number 13, and uh, all of you, that was a well-played game. Thanks for uh, being with us on Jeff. I really enjoyed it. All right, it's now time for this week's host chat. An audience member asked Ken, how did you avoid burning out during your run? Yeah, I mean, the hardest part is just how long the day is, because if you end up winning, you know, uh, you might, if you come in a champ and you keep winning, you might win five times, and you're going to have to play till 5 p.m., and it's a long day. I remember like my feet would hurt because you're just kind of standing in a very stressed position all day. It helps that it's a lot of fun. Like it's a very intense experience, but you know, if you've watched the show, once the game starts, you're just like, oh, this is just like on TV. There's Alex and there's the board and it's just like Jeopardy. But at night, I just did not want to think about the game, but the game would still just unspool in my head. I'd like lie there in bed thinking about daily doubles and stuff. Oh, how cute. I like the idea of Ken lying in bed thinking about daily doubles. <laughs> Just like we do, Michael. I know, wearing his gym jams and with his little one of those old-fashioned like sleeping hats that they used to wear. Huh. Anyway, uh, that's it for today's show. Be sure to tune in later today to watch Adriana go for her 14th win and join us back here on Monday as we break down another week of games. See you next week.
Hey Ken, what's that thing the kids say? You mean smash the like, subscribe, and bell button so you'll be the first to know when we upload more great videos? Yeah, that's it. Do that. <laughs>